Hello everybody, welcome back to Auto X. And as you can see, we are under umbrellas because it is raining cats and dogs here in Mumbai. It's relentless rain, but we've had a fantastic day today because we've finally gotten our hands on the two new Husqvarna motorcycles. Now, if you are not familiar with Husqvarna, it is one of the oldest motorcycle brands in the world, founded in 1903. And while they are better known for motocross, they still have always been making very good motorcycles in all categories. With us today is the Svartpillin and the Vitpillin. Now, those are very confusing names even for us, but don't get misunderstood, they're both the same motorcycle underneath. They both share the same platform with the KTM Duke and they have the same engine and same chassis. More or less, they're just basically the evil twin of the Duke. They are very compact bikes, but they look super funky, super cool, and we've had a great day today riding them. Now, the main differences are not very noticeable, but there are a few differences which probably can tell you about. Husqvarna may have just launched the 250s in India, but the Swat Pillen and the Wit Pillen have been on sale on the, in, in the international market for a while now, but they've been on sale with larger capacity engines. The 250s that we have here look identical to the 400s that are on sale in the international market. Coming back to the 250s, both these motorcycles share a lot of parts in common, like the fuel tank, for example, look identical, the headlights, the tail lamps, the instrument cluster, they're all the same. But there are quite a few differences between the two. Say, for example, the Witpillen has a more cafe racer type of styling, whereas the Swat Pillen is more scrambler style. If you look at the SWAT pillin, you will notice three primary changes. The handlebar is taller, it has dual sport tires, and it has a panel on the tank to mount a tank bag. If you come to the wit pillin, you will notice that it has clip-on handlebars and sits on road bias tires. So with the clip-on handlebars, the wit pillin has a much, much more aggressive riding posture, something that you will or you may find stressful, especially when you're riding longer hours because it is way too aggressive. It has a naturally tucked down position and it really cramps you for room. It's really tight. In comparison, the Swat Pillin, because of the taller handlebars, it makes you feel a little more roomier and a lot more comfortable. In fact, Jared and I were debating if it is slightly more comfortable than the 250 Duke even. Yeah, well, I also want to mention one thing. If you guys are wondering why Ravi's hands are black, <laughs> it's because he's been riding in the rain continuously all day. So don't get freaked out about that. Uh, but yes, he's absolutely right. For a guy of my size, especially, I'm six feet three inches tall and I weigh 110 kilograms. I'm a very big, heavy guy. And I was very surprised when I got on top of the Swart Pillin because when you look at the bike, the dimensions are very small. It's a very tiny bike. It kind of resembles a monkey bike for me, especially. But when I got on the bike, there was just a lot of leg room and the ergonomics in the seating position was pretty damn good for the city. When I got on this Vit Pillin, I was absolutely turned off. It was too tight. The cafe racer style seating was terrible. Too much weight on my arms. My back went for a toss. The seat is too stiff and it just was not good for someone of my size. Yeah, I'm sure if you're a lot younger and a lot fitter than me, you definitely would like the city position because it is very cool. Like when Ravi was riding and he looked like a badass, but still, it just depends on if you're looking for that cafe racer style position. I don't think it's a very good motorbike to ride in the city at all, considering the suspension setup. And also just to bring it back to you guys' attention, these bikes are more or less identical to the KTM Duke 250. They have the same chassis, the same suspension, the same engine. The engine is a 249cc, it gets about 29 brake horsepower and 24 Nm. So the performance is exactly identical. The only difference is these are much lighter by around four kilograms. So it does have a better power to weight ratio. So it does marginally feel a little better. Everything is exactly the same. The Bosch fuel injection is the same. The travel of the front suspension is the same. So everything about the bike is more or less the same on paper, but because of the seating position and the compact dimensions, the bikes do feel a lot different. And of course, when you see them on the roads, they look completely different. So if you want to compare engine performance, the throttle response is more or less very crisp, very nice, and it's got great power for a 250cc bike. The, probably the best in the segment. Actually, it is the best in the segment. And I just love the way the engine feels. It's not the most refined, but it's a very nice engine with a great amount of power. And it just kicks in whenever you want that. And it also gives you that really extra oomph factor because of the lightweight that it has. 
even the handling now, I think Ravi had a tough time with this bike because of the steering position, but the handling of the bike is still magnificent in the Vitvillain and the Smart Villain. Which bike do you think handles better with wow. the seating position? I think in terms of comfort, I would definitely pick the Smart Villain because like I mentioned, uh, the taller handlebar, the overall uh, riding but did the, posture. But did that seating position uh, change your, the handling for you at all? Uh, I think the handling on the Vit Villain was a lot better. I mean, uh, probably not a lot better, but it was definitely a better than what the Smart Villain was because you're as it is in a couched up position so yeah. putting weight on the front end is a lot easier on the weight pillin than on the squat pillin thereby I think it handles slightly more better than the squat yeah. yeah. I also want to mention there are two riding modes in this bike there is a road mode of course and then there is supermoto so these bikes have dual channel ABS but when you switch to supermoto mode you get only single channel ABS I don't know what that's for exactly because these bikes are definitely not off-road motorcycles at all. Even though uh, it is a Husqvarna and they're known for their amazing off-road bikes, these small bikes here are not off-road bikes. Look at the ground clearance. It's very low to the ground. When I was riding, again, because of my heavy weight, the bike gets lower and I was hitting speed breakers all the time. Even though it has a little bit of multi-purpose tires at the back, I don't think this is a bike you'd want to take off-road at all. Even though Bajaj told us during the press briefing that this bike can do a little bit of mild off-roading, if I were ever to get this bike, I would request you, please, for the love of God, don't take it off-road. Uh, you'll do some serious damage to your bike. Besides that, it's a very practical machine. So I'll have to again say that out of the two bikes here, and I'm sure Ravi agrees with me, the Spark Pillin is definitely hands down the better oh, bike. Yeah. These both bikes are urban sports commuter bikes. They're very small and compact and they're meant to be ridden only in the city. And you obviously want a lot of comfort when you're riding in cities like Mumbai or Delhi or Bangalore where the traffic is horrendous. Riding on the Vitpillin, your back and your arms are going to go for a toss. But this bike here is actually very comfortable, surprisingly, shockingly comfortable, even for a guy of my size. Uh, going on bumpy roads, of course, suspension is stiff. But, you know, if you're doing short distances of commuting, it's not a problem at all. Really, uh, the Spark Pillin is fast, very nimble. You can go through traffic without a problem at all. I think it's even more nimble than the KTM Duke 250, to be honest, in my opinion. So a very, very good motorcycle. The best power specs in the 250cc segment. There is no other competitor. If you look at the Yamaha FZ25, it's got very low power. If you look at the Jigsaw 250, even that has got, you know, not as much power as this, but it's got a little bit more comfort. But still, overall, the handling is fantastic. If you were to go up a little bit in price and engine size, this Honda CB300R is an amazing motorbike and it even weighs less than this. This weighs 156 kilograms and the Honda CB weighs 147 kilograms, which is mind-blowing considering the power you get and the handling that has. So even though the Honda gets short suspension and has a much better handling capabilities, the WP suspension on this is actually very good as well considering again the size. It's all about the size of these bikes and of course the looks. They're very unique, very niche products and they're fantastic. Uh, speaking about size, uh, Jared, both these motorcycles are smaller than the 250 Duke. In fact, if you put them next to the 250 Duke, you will find that the width pillin is a lot smaller. In fact, it is smaller than even the SWAT pillin in terms of its height and in terms of its width. And that is something which I come back to. It really shows in the way the riding triangle is, the riding geometry of the width pillin is. It really shows the compactness. It really shows and thereby you feel you feel cramped for room. That is something I keep coming back to because the Wit Pillin has been that sort of an experience. Yeah, yeah. And also, these are 17 inch tires, both front and rear, and it gets massive brakes. So, braking power is very good on the bikes. Like I said, they're very good bikes for the city. And Bajaj also mentioned to us they're aimed towards an older, more mature audience of 25 years and above. But I really don't see a customer base of someone who's older than 30 years old going for these motorcycles. So I think most of the customers under 25 would probably be attracted to these bikes. In fact, when we got the bikes in the dealership, we ran to a couple of youngsters who straight away started following us and asking us questions about the bike, what brand is it? Because they had no idea what it was, like a lot of people out there. And they love the bike a lot, but a lot of older customers don't even give it a second glance. So I'm not sure how Bajaj is looking to uh, focus these two bikes on an old, older, more mature audience. Yes, they are sophisticated machines. Yes, they look really funky, but I think that funkiness is what's gonna get the younger audience. And of course, the power figures for sure. The performance is fantastic. 
So, Jared, what do you think of the motorcycle? Well, to be very honest, I was very surprised with the spark plug of how, uh, uh, you know, not very comfortable, but it was it was accommodating to a guy of my size and riding it for short distances in the city, it was so much fun. The bottom line is this is a very very fun motorcycle because it's light, compact, nimble. It's a great beginner bike actually for people who want to get into sports biking. Super motorcycle and great pricing. I think 1.8 lakh is uh, approximately 1.8 lakh is a very good price. Uh, what about you? I'm sure you agree that's oh. the much better bike. Yeah, definitely. I'm absolutely with you on that. The Swart Pillin is much better in terms of uh, everyday usage. It's much more easier to live with on an everyday basis. Whether you're irrespective of what age you are, whether you're a college-going guy or even somebody older, it's a lot more easier to live with. What I also think is that Husqvarna. I mean, it's a new brand. for country like india it's not been on sale it's a new brand it's newly launched but given bajaj's history and how they've established ktm and how it has gained prominence over the past decade or so how it has gained fan following i think husqvarna should follow the suit as well well um, i mean it's uh, tough to say they just been launched and the pandemic is still in full effect so sales are down everywhere but the bottom line is just go to a dealership take a test drive for yourself and then you'll get a better answer and if you have any questions or comments you can always reach out to us or put them down in the section below and please make sure to like and subscribe to our youtube channel